Welcome to this installment of Round Glass Review. Well, actually, toroid glass review for this video. Today we'll be talking about the Optica 800mm f8 mirror lens. This lens was sold under a lot of different badges, and the sample images on the web show a large variety of image quality. So, is this lens as bad as some of the images suggest, or are people just using it poorly? Without a doubt, long lenses are hard to use. The longer the focal length, the narrower the depth of field. F8 on a 24mm lens will cover about a meter to infinity depending on the lens design and register distance, etc. F8 on this lens is a depth of field of some centimeters at close focus and a few meters at near infinity. Also, lenses like this need to be treated differently than a typical camera lens to obtain the best images. We'll cover that and more in this video, but first, let's do a quick lens biography and specs rundown. This lens was made by Samyang and branded, I believe, Samyang, but also Optica, like the sample I used, and uh, Bauer, Vivitar, Kenko, Niwer, and some others. The typical lens uses for this lens would be distant subjects like aircraft, wildlife, sports, and so forth. But the lens's close focus distance makes it viable for other uses, such as portraits, at least in terms of what you can do with it, maybe not necessarily what you should do with it. Now a quick note on terminology, because this lens really is just a telescope with a focusing helicoid we'll be using telescope verbiage in this video. Instead of calling it a mirror lens, we're going to call it a catadioptric lens. A standard lens, like an 800 millimeter long tube, would be called a refractor. The focal length on this lens is 800 millimeters. The aperture is f8, that's fixed. The filter size is 105 millimeters. Now you will notice here, this lens isn't actually f8. Because there's a mirror in the center, which is roundabout, and I should have measured this before I sold it, roundabout an inch, inch and a quarter in diameter, that space is taken out of the center, and so the actual aperture is going to be in the vicinity of f9, f9.5. The closest focus for this lens is 11.48 feet, which is 3.49 meters. It's manual focus only. The lens is available in many systems because it is a T-mount or telescope mount, that's what the T means, so it will work on any system that has a register distance of less than 55 millimeters and which also has available T-mount adapters. The weight on this lens is slightly more than two pounds which is about one kilo and the angle of view is 3.1 degrees. This is a catadioptric lens, which means that it's a long length lens in a small body. Basically, what you're seeing here in the lens diagram, I could not find one for this lens. So this is a standard generic lens diagram for a catadioptric lens. Basically, the light still effectively travels 800 millimeters in rough numbers, but it does so by bouncing around. And you can see that the light path is kind of Z-shaped in this. So it goes in through the front of the lens, hits the rear mirror, is focused into the front mirror, which is almost as far forward as the front lens, and that focuses the light backwards out uh, through the tube to the sensor. Now this lens also has a set of elements, of glass elements, in the back of it that are used for correcting uh, the image, but I believe, and I could be wrong on this because I wasn't able to get the lens to work without them, but I believe they also magnify the image coming through them to make this, give this an, uh, a, a narrower angle of view. So my suspicion is that without those, if there were a way to get it to focus, it would be a shorter, shorter focal length lens but I was not able to conclusively demonstrate that while I had this lens, and believe me, I tried. So it could also be that those elements there that are in the back really are just to correct and focus the light properly. 
the number one positive aspect about this lens is the build quality. It's very good with smooth focus and a solid barrel. The focus is coarse, we'll talk about that in a moment, but it's smooth and it's, it's easy to, to focus this lens. It's easy to move the lens so that it can be focused. Let me say that more clearly. It also balances well with cameras. It's good with heavier cameras because the lens is fairly light, and that means that if you hold the camera normally, you can still pivot the camera around to track your subject. Also, mirror lenses render colors and contrast well. Better, in fact, than refractor lenses because there are fewer surfaces for the light to pass through. And because two of those surfaces are surface-coated mirrors, meaning the light doesn't even pass through those surfaces, they bounce right off of it. Sharpness. This is a major negative. Even compared to other mirror lenses, it's subpar. And I've used uh, four or six different mirror lens models. This was the worst. It was so incredibly soft. I took the lens apart, cleaned the surfaces of the mirrors because they had some haze on them, thought maybe that would fix it, I realigned everything very precisely. No, the lens that I had, at least the sample of one that I used, is very soft. The out of focus characteristics are standard for mirror lenses, which is to say they're very jittery. They have the characteristic donut shape out of focus areas for high, uh, specular highlights. If you have a solid background like the sky, like you're photographing an airplane or a bird, you're not gonna notice the jittery background and the jittery out of focus area. But if you don't, then you're going to get that jittery out of focus uh, area. Focus is very coarse, which means that when you rotate the helicoid, the barrel, it moves in and out very quickly. And that makes it exceedingly easy for this, this lens to focus past the intended subject. If you, if you wanted to buy or find a fine focus arm for this lens, that would help with that. And basically a fine focus arm is just a thing that sticks out from the side of the lens. So in order to get the same amount of focus, you have to move your arm more, which gives you the ability to have finer focus. That would help. Also, this lens, like all mirror lenses and like all T-mount lenses, almost, nah, there's a few exceptions I can think of, focuses way past infinity. Way, way past it. In fact, I did some tests with this lens to see if I could calibrate the infinity focus. Now, you cannot do that with the helicoid. It's built in such a way that the helicoid cannot be adjusted to calibrate focus, the infinity focus. But if you move the front lens element forward, you can adjust where the infinity focus is. Basically, if you put the helicoid all the way at focused way past infinity and unscrew the front element, you need to move it forward around about a millimeter and a half in that vicinity to get infinity focus to be the far side of the helicoid movement. That also gives you a closer close focus. The issue with that is you need to find some batting material to put behind the mirror, or the front element rather, to hold it in place when you retighten it. I tried gaskets, um, pieces of rubber band that were fitted into place, lots of different things. I couldn't find one that was stiff enough or that stayed in place well enough. The gaskets actually stayed in place really well, but they weren't stiff enough to get that to work. But concept demonstration, I could prove that it works, I just couldn't get the lens to fix in that position. So there are some phototypes that are easiest to, to achieve with this lens, namely stationary objects photographed from a tripod. Subjects that should almost definitely not be taken with this lens, portraits are the big one because of the out of focus area shape and because of the general softness, this lens is not flattering for portraits. Like catadioptric telescopes, the mirror on this lens retains temperature and that can affect images. A temperature differential between the mirror, especially the rear mirror, 
and the air within the lens of only a few degrees Fahrenheit, which is around about one and a half degrees Celsius, will have an effect on image quality due to turbulence and convection of the air inside the lens housing. So when you use this lens, don't immediately take it from a warm or cool indoor area to a warmer or colder opposite temperature outdoors or vice versa. Doing that will reduce your image quality even beyond where it normally is because of those temperature differentials. This lens is effectively a telescope, so it works like a telescope that can be easily focused. Think of it like that. Handle it like a telescope and your images will improve. And a key aspect to having telescopes work well is giving them the time to come to an internal temperature equilibrium with the air around them. For using your camera, your best bet when focusing this lens is to have your autofocus confirmation set to either your middle focus point or the middle few focus points, the middle group, and have those be your only active focus confirmation points, and then trust that they're giving you proper focus readings when you have the subject lined up. F8 sounds like a very small aperture, but on 800 millimeters, it's not. It's a very narrow depth of field. It's really hard to focus. And it's also so dark for your camera that a lot of cameras struggle to give you accurate focus confirmation. So before going crazy with this lens, run some tests with it just to make sure that your camera is able to give you accurate focus confirmation. For your metering modes, I found this lens performed the best with either center weighted or spot metering. Even though the center of the lens is blocked by the mirror, the light is still dispersed. There's not, there, the lens has very little light drop off relative to other long lenses. But the small aperture will challenge most cameras full metering zone areas. So reducing the number of metering zones to the middle or reducing the area that is metered would be a better way to say it will help set your camera up for success when metering by focusing the meter reading where there is the most light. Also shoot in raw because that will give you the ability to correct for some meter issues. When many cameras get down to f8 they start to underexpose the images. So you can exposure compensate if you want or if you shoot in raw you can easily comp uh, bring the exposure up a stop or two in post and that will definitely cover whatever underexposure is happening with your meter if it suffers that. But if you're in the field and you check your first few images and you see that they are underexposed, then use your exposure value compensation to adjust that exposure and you'll have an easier time in post. This lens is used when you don't want to be near something or can't be near something. So if you want to photograph airplanes landing, and the nearest you can get is, say, underneath the flight path or uh, a football field, uh, a soccer pitch away from the, the runway. This lens can give you up-close images. They won't be sharp, but it can give them to you of those airplanes. If you're at a sports game and you want to get pictures that make it look like you're on the field, even though you're three rows back or wherever you're sitting, you can pretty much do that with this lens. So it's basically a single use, one trick pony, which is to say it's designed to give you working distance from what you're taking pictures of. Does the lens handle well? Focus is smooth, but coarse, meaning you can focus way past your subject really quickly. And it also has a narrow depth of field, which makes precise focusing a challenge. If you do decide to use this for portraits, for some reason I cannot understand. It will be really, really hard to focus on your subject's eyes. And if you do, you're still not gonna get much more than their head in focus, or at least their face. Does the lens flatter subjects or is it harsh on them? Well, for the right subject, such as a single object with a background that's a uniform color, this lens can work well. The, the color rendition from this lens is good and that will flatter your subjects. The sharpness from this lens and the out of focus areas 
are challenging for the majority of subjects and that means that when you want to use a mirror lens, especially this one, it should be because you have decided the compromises you have to make with this lens are worth the trade-off of using it versus a different lens.